Hey, Hi, so well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm well. I'm good, thing. Yeah, I'm I feel well. like your room is a lot more neater than mine, which is very bad. This means I need to go back and just do a nice little spring clean again. Don't be fooled. <laughs> you don't want to see the floor. No, uh, um, I actually did like a massive clean when like the lockdown started. So I actually ordered some new furniture, but I ordered it from a dodgy site. Oh. <laughs> Oh, they took my money. <laughs> but I got it back because I prayed. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> no, I'm, trying to like, I'm trying to jazz it up a bit. But yeah, I used um, the first couple of weeks of lockdown to sort my life out in terms of that. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's also good as well because I did the exact same thing. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's just great to... MK, can you hear us? Oh, she, she can still hear us. I'm just going to... Yes, I can. You. I'm just yeah. on mute. All right, I'm just going to put you in a rating room so it like shows the lock grid of just me and Rorocha for like, because totally. it's recording. Yeah. Okay, there we go. You butchered my name there. <laughs> you know what? This is what I wanted to ask you. How do you pronounce this first, <laughs> first and foremost so we can get that out of the way? Because I'm pretty good with pronunciations, but until the person has said it, then I can yeah. imitate that. So please. My name is Weruche. Weruche. Perfect. All right, there we go. See, I'm good. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So I'm ready as long as you're ready. And, um, yeah. Go. But thank you again for actually accepting this as well. I'm sure you probably had a mass amount of people that wanted to get involved with you. I literally, yeah. I'm going to start the interview and then I'm going to go into the reason why. So yeah. Um, hi everyone. Welcome to Represent Radio. I'm here on this brand new show. And you know, I always bring you the biggest, best guests. I always try to diversify my options, but also make sure that I'm keeping up to date with what's current and what's really good. Now, the reason why this series took out to me, I actually know Michaela Cole personally as well. And um, I haven't seen her in a while. And when I saw this and I watched this, a few, a few of my friends who had worked on this had said, like, Sam, have you seen it yet? So I was like, All right, you know what? Let me just check it out. Let me check it out. Because I reached out and I was like, yes, we had the go ahead. We got Ruche on, a PR on, and I was like, you know what? This is great. Let me watch it. And I was like, <gasps> I had mixed emotions. I don't think I've ever phoned my friend as much times in a space of like 10 minutes after wow. watching this series. And I was like, wow, this is <laughs> what we're doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, firstly, I mean, I had a whole directory, but seeing as how I've just put that forward, what was it like being on set and um, just understanding what this series was about and how did you expect or kind of how did you feel like the audience would react to not only your character, but everyone else playing their own? Because you take us through your own individual lives yeah. and your own experiences. So how did that feel for you being on set with not only incredible actors, but portraying such an important message that needed to be told, I felt? How was that like for you? Um, it was, uh, and still kind of is, a, a big deal and a huge responsibility because um, the topics that are addressed are really intense ones. And um, I'm finding, especially from some of the feedback, that a lot of people can relate to the things happening in it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think for me, it was treating everything with a lot of respect because these are possible real life scenarios where people have experienced these things. So I felt like I had to give it the most respect and to portray the most truthful versions of it, you know, to get to the real of it. And um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. That's your question, right? <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Answered it. Answered it. So, um, tell us a bit about you. How you started? Because I remember seeing you on Top Boy. I remember. I remember. I remember that season. Is you know so funny? I actually recently watched a couple of the episodes where you had. It was more about the kids and obviously yeah. Michael and that whole situation of them coming out and that yeah. whole situation with um you know, just that whole process in the beginning stages where they will show the whole build up. And I remember seeing you because that was quite recently. Uh, what was that like for you? Because Top Boy was a massive, it still is a massive thing now, obviously the resurgence of it, but then times as well, because obviously I was younger than times as well. It just, yeah. you know, that was, experience of you being involved, how was that? It was really cool because actually I had um, missed the first season because I was in Nigeria that year. 
so I'd been seeing tweets and everyone talking about Top Boy and I was like, what's this Top Boy everyone's talking about? You know, everyone's on it. And then um, when I moved back to the, when I moved back to London after the year I was in Nigeria, I watched it and I was like, oh my goodness, this is sick. Um, I thought it was really truthful to portray that side of um, life that some people experience and the rawness of it and the realness of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think it was later on that year, um, my agent then called me and he said, I've got you an audition for Top Boy. And I was like, what? And he was like, listen, no makeup. Don't go there dressed nice. Go there in a tracksuit. <laughs> like, they didn't want to see you because they thought you were too put together. They thought you were too cute for it. And I was like, no, 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 I can do it. Um, and I went in there in character, which was a terrifying thing because I walked in with attitude and everything. And the cast yeah. and was like, I was like, yeah, what? You yeah, know, do the thing. And then I, leave, I was leaving. I was like, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when I got the call that I got it, I was I was like over the moon because you know we all know how big Top Boy is, and I think yeah. it's a part of history and UK history, um, urban history in the UK. And I would I love to be a part of it, and I was in it, and it was um it was definitely interesting um, playing a character who was a drug dealer yeah. <laughs> in the streets. I mean, we had quite we had a lot of rehearsals. I remember there was this rehearsal session we had one day where. I can't remember the name of the guy, but he taught us how to put the drugs. Oh, in. yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that yeah. part, yeah. I remember and that part. And then he made us go on the street and try That's and sell each other codedly, which I was terrified because I was like, if a real police officer comes over, <laughs> I'm just telling him that this is sugar wrapped in a little plastic bag. Yeah, yeah. But they tried to get us to be, you know, as authentic and realistic as possible. But, so it was, it, was, um, it was definitely interesting, and I'm, I'm really happy to have been in something so um historic in yeah so historic so monumental in a lot of young yeah. people's lives um yeah. now you've also starred in bad education mm-hmm. sliced yeah. inside number nine i've done my research of course as you know <laughs> inside number nine all these three are vastly different roles mm-hmm. and i wanted to ask you which role to date has taught you the most about yourself None of those TV jobs as much as my theatre jobs. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, I find that theatre takes a lot more out of you. It requires a lot more work and a lot more attention. And um, some of the stories that I've done in theatre have been quite intense. And you're doing this over a period of time and you're doing the same thing. So you rehearse for about six to eight weeks which unlike TV, is kind of like maybe a week of rehearsal and then you just go and you leave it there. But with theatre, you're delving into it and you have to be present at all times. So I would say my theatre jobs, and the one in particular is a play called Liberian Girl at the Royal Court, which was about the, um, the Civil War and child soldiers. Mm. That would be... I have completely forgotten your question. No, it's fine. I said which one... <laughs> which, uh, which role taught you the most about yourself? Yes. Um, Liberian Girl was a play that I did. Um, and that taught me the most about myself. Mm-hmm. In the sense of I had to learn how much of myself I could give to a character and learn how to bring it back to me. Because the character I played was a young girl who was raped by the child soldiers. And um, it's intense to play that every single night. Um, so I had to learn how to be there and be truthful and um, also be able to switch off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Crazy. Um, so big up <laughs> my producer, Amy. Uh, love her to bits. She wanted to ask this question and put this question forward to you. Now, there's okay. a scene in I May Destroy You yeah. where your character, Terry, um, yes. is at a feminist advert shoot. Yeah. And they proceed to ask her about her wig and asked her to take it off. Yeah. Now, she has two questions. She says, have you, exper- have you ever experienced anything similar to this? Yeah. Um, and the other question is, do you think the feminist movement is inclusive of black women? So the first one being, yeah. I know I've never experienced anything like that, which I'm glad for, because that would probably scar me for life. 
Um, <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and I, I don't know how my reaction would be. I'd hope to react in a professional manner, but you never know. Yeah. Um, and the second one was, does the feminist movement, feminist movement include black women? Yes. I would like to think so. Um, I wouldn't personally say I'm a feminist, so I can't speak for all feminists. I am for women and men to have equal rights. Um, but I would hope that it would include, I mean, there are different kinds of feminism, aren't there, as well? So um, I think Black women have to stick together as feminists and, you know, stand for ourselves and speak out for ourselves. Yeah. Thank you. That answered it. Amy, you got your answer. <laughs> <laughs> you got your answer. Here's something I wanted to see. Um, I read this in um, an article that came out about you, and that was um, in the beginning, you and Michaela were fake friends. At the end of it, you became real friends. Yeah. Uh, talk me through the auditioning phases with her, and what was it like acting on screen with her? Um, the audition was great. We, I had three auditions. I had the first audition with a casting assistant, second audition with a casting director and the producer, and I think the director. And then my third audition was with Michaela, the director and the casting director. And I remember walking in and we're like, hey, what's up? And then Michaela literally just sat there. She, Cause she's so animated. So she sat there staring at me. I was like, okay girl, I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> and then we did this and it was just really natural. Um, and then we had a chat afterwards and then I left, but there was just this electricity. We, we just got on like wildly. And I remember leaving feeling like I'd been on the most incredible date ever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Nice. So that was that was that was my audition process, and then uh, I think about two months later, I got the call. I'd been offered the role, so that was cute. Yay! (laughs) (laughs) Um, and working with her was great. I mean, it was really inspirational. Um, Kayla wrote this. She co-directs and executive produced executive produced it while being the lead i mean she was never not working yeah so many hats so many hats hats. yeah the way she took it it was like as soon as she's coming off doing an intense scene she's got asking questions to see the playback for the right direction and then she's having people calling her saying you've got lunchtime meeting so at lunch where i'm chilling eating my food relaxing she's eating at production meetings so it was so inspirational to see that she, it can be done yeah um very i mean inspirational is the only word i can use for it because now i'm inspired and i have hope that as black women and women in general that we can do all the things we want to mm-hmm. uh, so yeah it was it was very inspirational great 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 thank you um <laughs> I was reading the Evening Standard and um, you stated that you don't personally act out any sex scenes. Now, is that something in the future that will change as you go further in your career? Or is that something that's quite significant for you? And why is it for religious police? Or is this just something that you just don't feel particularly comfortable with because you might have kids in the future (laughs) and they might watch it back and it's like, oh, look, that's... It's all of those things combined, yeah. Um, it was something I decided at the beginning of my career and it's not going to change. Mm-hmm. Um, Christian, and based on my beliefs and my faith, I would like to keep that side of my life private for um, myself and, mm-hmm. my, <laughs> and my family. <laughs> you know? And um, I, I think it's great that, you know, me standing on my beliefs um, is not penalized. Mm-hmm been penalized and I haven't lost out on work which is a testament I think to um standing on my beliefs and standing for what I stand for as well as uh, production and uh, the time moving on with people realizing that there are alternatives and it doesn't it doesn't stop you from moving forward in your career yeah yeah I even read the the part where you said that even though you opted out and you got a stunt double in that position you still wanted to keep the authenticity of that part because you understand and you you understand how important that was for that scene to yeah. be played out. And because yeah. obviously it's quite graphic, the, the series. So you understood that 
this is something that was needed, but you yeah. still wanted it to continue. You didn't want to cut it out at all. Yes, because I, I, I wasn't compromised mm -hmm. and uh, my artistic you know, integrity wasn't, my integrity wasn't compromised and the artistic integrity wasn't compromised. So for me, that was like a perfect match. I mean, I was at the point when I was um, told that this was going to be a part, you know, the sex scene was part of it and would I be up for it? And I was like, you know, the answer is no. So I was at the point where I was, um, I was ready to forfeit. I, you know, I was ready to lose it because then some non-negotiables and that's one for me. But I'm very happy that we were able to come to a medium um, to find a way to tell the story in this authenticity. And I'm you know? happy you stood your ground. And I'm happy yeah. you stood your ground and you stood your beliefs. And I feel like that's something that is not really highlighted as much in this industry because... It's hard to, I will say yeah, that. Yeah, 100%. You, know, you think that you have to, as people, we generally want to please. And in the industry, it's, you know, a lot of sex sells and stuff. So it's encouraging to know that you can be who you are without compromising. Hmm. Inspiration. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, one of my last few questions I'll ask is there's another interview that you released in the Metro and I thought that was quite interesting as well because you mentioned saying that hard hitting deep drama is where it's at for me. Yeah. So my question to you would be what ones have you seen that you wish that you was a part of and is there anything new that you can tell us in regards to your future that you're going to be in? <laughs> you asked me like three questions in one. <laughs> All right, one. The first one is, what one have you seen that you wish that you was a part of? That's the first um, one. Oh god, I can't think off the top of my head right now. Oh, hard hitting deep dramas. Any come to mind? Do you mean like TV shows? It could be whatever. It could be TV shows. It could be movies. Well, I'll just say my favourite film ever. Um, Which is? Precious. Ooh. Yeah. That was deep. I remember that one. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, that's I remember. Is that something that you wish you was a part of as well? Yeah. Yeah. You like to tell a story. Yeah. Yeah, you like to tell a story. <laughs> <laughs> you like to tell a story. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and is there anything new that you could tell us in regards to your future? What can uh, we expect? Because obviously every, everyone's focused on I May Destroy You, yeah. but I want to know what's next for you. Well, um, Sliced, you've seen, uh, was yeah. season one. We got the go-ahead for season two. We were supposed to shoot in April, but mm. coronavirus. Coronavirus! <laughs> <laughs> we're to Cardi B. Came and um, messed up the whole thing. Yeah. But we're hoping to film that when things get better in like the summer. Yeah. Um, apart from that, I'm doing my audio books, which are out there. Okay. I do my audio books. Okay. Um, Where can we find it? Audible. Audible.co.uk. Yeah. You should pay me for that plug. <laughs> <laughs> You're about this money. <laughs> my audio books, I think I've got, at the moment I've got about seven. Um, okay. All written by um, brilliant, brilliant writers, majority of which are black African ladies, mm -hmm. um, which I love to tell those kind of stories because I, you know, I can relate to them. Mm -hmm. and it's nice to also share our stories to a wider range because all sorts of people listen to these stories. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the themes are central, they're global. Everyone goes through love, pain and whatever. As human beings, we all experience the same thing, obviously just from the viewpoint of an African so I yeah. think um, yeah I love the audio books I really enjoy them nice so. um this is something I feel like I kind of have to mention now because of the time that we're in yeah. with the uh, Black Lives Matter with the protesting with everything that's gone on in the UK and around the world and the death of so many people um what are your thoughts in just terms of have you ever experienced racism at all in the field that we're in like we're such in a creative field and I feel like it's quite evident that it is in there. But have you ever experienced any personally? Nothing detrimental. There have been the multiple microaggressions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she smiles. <laughs> There's a story there. Your face says it all. I'm not going to give it the energy because... Fair enough. Um, 
but I do, I do appreciate what's happening now. And mm -hmm. I think much needed to think that we're having a second civil rights movement is wild, but, um, it has to happen. And I am hopeful and expectant that after all this has died down, that things are not going to be the same anymore. You know, nobody can hide under ignorance of how they treat another human being. Everybody should be treated with respect. And, um, that's what's gonna happen or people gonna lose their jobs yeah and we've seen it happening day by day and i, I must say i'm not i'm glad it's being all put out to the forefront now do you know what i mean um I'm, yeah it's just that people need to be held accountable that they can't yeah they can't just feel like they can get away with just treating another human being regardless of this yeah exactly exactly what advice my last question what advice would you give an up coming actress who's seen you in Top Boy, who's seen you in Slice, who's seen you in Inside Nine, and be like, oh my gosh, I want to be exactly like her. What advice would you give a young female who's getting into the game right now and just wants to, you know, tackle it head on? I would say don't give up. It's most likely going to be hard as hell. You're going to want to give up. <laughs> if you know it's what you're supposed to do, if you know it's your calling, you have to keep going and one day it's gonna pop off <laughs> amen to that amen. amen to that we've had the lovely Ruruche Opia on the show did I say it right there yes you do well done. okay good 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 just making sure I always like to double check and make sure we've had her on here on represent radio thank you so much for watching she's in a brand new I may destroy you featuring a lot of amazing actors in there and um, check it out if you haven't seen it already. Make sure you go check it out. But since this is a radio show, I wanted to know what is your playlist? What do you like listening to? And what song would you like us to play you on Represent? Hey, this is too much. Hey, uh, what are you listening to right now? What gets you in the I, mood? I've been listening to Mixes by Mercedes Benson. That's okay. actually what I've been listening to um, because she does, she's been doing some mixes for this Instagram uh, workout that I do every day. Yeah, Ciara and, London. Yeah. Yeah, Ciara yeah. London. Yeah, yeah. I, honestly, I'm seeing results. <laughs> so, <laughs> Amen. I love been listening to, um, to Mercedes Mixes. Um, listen to a lot of Bashman. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Father, cleanse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what song would I want you to play right what now? What song? Let us know your mood right now. What song would you want us to play? Um, Black. Oh, how can I not know? It's the song that goes black on black on black, black, black. You know oh, you're talking about Buddy. No, is it? Yeah, you're talking about Buddy. Yes. Black, guys, black of black of yeah, yeah. That's Buddy. That's, that's cool, Buddy. That's, that's Buddy. All right. She asks for it. She gets it. <laughs> here's, here's Black by Buddy on Represent Radio. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you, honestly. Thank you, man. Honestly. Thanks for, me. Thanks for reaching out. Because when I saw it, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. We got to do this. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's good, man. It's really, really good. I mean, deep dive, man. This is this is this is stuff that I've been kind of doing for quite some time. So it's just like, yeah, in the same position with the advice that you was given a young actor. As I've been getting the same advice from a lot of my friends who's just been like, "You're crazy if you think I'm gonna let you quit now." Do you know what I mean? And um, I mean, I had this thing where every three to four months, I'd like say I'm done. Yeah, uh, that happened for a good. That happened up until 2018. So I started acting in 2010. So for eight years, every three to four months, I'm like, yeah, I'm done, I'm done, <laughs> I'm done, I'm done. But um, someone said to me last year, he said, uh, a friend of mine, he said, when you look at how far you come on this road, it's too long. The way back is too far. Mm -hmm. so you have to keep going. Mm -hmm. And for the first time ever, I know I've heard it before, but it just made so much sense to me in that moment. Because it's going to take more to go back to the mm -hmm. start than to keep going so mm. it's like logic why not i feel you on i feel you on that one i think even for me um i started behind the camera and i graduated uni in 2013 started yeah. behind the camera didn't know what i want to do i was studying media production and communication so that's very broad i loved marketing i loved advertising but i couldn't fathom working in a room 
sitting down at a desk. I was, I was too active. I was too energetic. It wasn't my life. I couldn't do it. So when the opportunity, uh, I think 2015, I started my YouTube channel and I was like, you know what I've done? Like, I think I did about quite a few screen tests, channel four being one of them. They said no. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go on YouTube and start building up my portfolio. And we're in 2020 now, five years on. And I'm like, I must say, I've come way too far. Like the names that have been attached to my name, I'm looking back and I'm like, yo, like even my friends that remind me, because sometimes I forget. I feel like sometimes we forget. We forget because we're always looking forward. We never really pay. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, I know you're already thinking about the next move. And when she said that, I was actually doing an audition tape. I was like, you know me too well. This is already like, all right, what's, what's next? What's next? But she was like, you need to stop and enjoy what's happening right now and process, yeah. take it in. So, I mean, I think we just have to take it. I'm, I'm a day-to-day kind of person where I take each day as it comes. So, um, yeah, man, keep pushing. Well done, man, honestly. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. You too. I love people coming up behind you as well, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you too, man. Thank you so much for your time as well. Thank you for having me, man. Have a good day. <laughs> You too, take care. Bye. <laughs> Bye.